Welcome to this demo of how we made episode 374 of Grumpy Old Geeks. This is going to be kind of uncut, except for the beginning where we work in Zencaster to record the show. I left the beginning and the end in, so you can kind of see what the setup is and what it looks like when we record the show. And then after that, it'll go into some of the other stuff. Uh, it's long. I'm not going to kid you. And some of it's going to be insanely boring, especially the logic stuff, because this is everything that it took today to actually make the show go. And we start recording at nine in the morning. And I think I finished it somewhere about two in the afternoon with a bunch of breaks in between for other work and things that you have to do. But uh, pretty much everything in here, except for the middle part of the Zencaster recording, like I said, is everything that I did to publish the show that is going to come out in a couple hours tonight. So I just wanted to get this out there. So all the people that have been asking me what my workflow is, what's my process for Grumpy Old Geeks, here it is. This is everything. This is what I do. Rolling local. Rolling local. Rolling Zencaster. This episode is sponsored by Privacy.com. It's like a burner phone for credit cards. To sign up for free and get a $5 credit, go to Privacy.com slash GOG. That's $5 free to spend anywhere by just signing up. Privacy.com slash GOG. Boop, 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 boop. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Did you labor over your Labor Day, Jason? Just those forgotten subscriptions, goodbye. To sign up free and get a $5 credit, just go to privacy.com slash GOG. That's $5 free to spend anywhere by just signing up. Privacy.com slash GOG. This one's a no-brainer, so get on it now. Privacy.com slash GOG. Get that $5 free. Okay. Perfect. Hour on the dot. Got it. Waiting for years. <clears throat> yeah, you blipped out there, so... So did you. <laughs> on yeah. me. Okay. Saving that, downloading that. Okay. Uh, title? How about Gone Fishing? Oh, I like that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Okay, so the show's been recorded. And now we've got a bunch of files here. These are the Zencaster files. And we can expand these a little bit here. Actually, no, these are, you know, it's interesting. They changed the numbers on me. Thank you very much, Zencaster. So we're just going to rename these real quick. So it's easier for me. And what we're going to do is just our standard post-production because we have to turn and burn this thing real quick. Okay, so I've got a bunch of files here. We'll save these as wave because it saves you a lot of time down the line. Some of the processing just works a lot faster with waves. And you don't want to be opening and resaving MP3s because they're compressed audio already. The high quality MP3s that come out of Zencaster are just fine. You never have to use wave. All right, those four are done. Come back here. I actually dumped these because I still have them on Dropbox. Now, these four files we're going to drop into RX7 Advanced. And I just run a quick mouth to click on these. Let's batch all of these, get them going. It's going to take a couple of minutes for these to go. And while those are going, pop back out here. And we'll do the show notes real quick. A lot of people are curious as to how we do these show notes. So here you go. You get to see the, how the sausage is made. So we just basically, it's just a bunch of links. So all we do is we kill all this basic stuff, or all of them. And you can see on the left side of the screen, uh, we're using an app called Quip. Actually, I'll show you real quick. This is what a standard episode for the Wednesday show looks like. So we've got our news. Do our media candy and at the library. More under the week. Feedback loop with all your questions. All your questions. All your questions. And then the shout outs and then the ad read. So that's pretty much what makes up one episode of Grumpy Old Geeks. So if that's what you were looking for before, now you can see it. So we have a bunch of crap in here because when we do the shows, 
it's nice to have your bullets instead of having to try and remember it or write it out. We just bullet point pieces from the articles. Makes it pretty easy for us when we go through because we've read them, but you know, you're not going to be as sharp on them when the time comes to record because I know I'm personally doing multiple things at once besides talking on the show. I'm keeping Zencaster going, keeping my local going, making sure that everything is working just fine. And uh, Pro Skater, love that game so much. Terminator Dark Fate, hate you so much. And, yep. We generally try and format these links beforehand so that it makes it a little easier when we come back through. Yep. Do, do, do. Almost done with this part. Then after this, got to do a lot of uh, quick key commands. I set up special key commands here in BB Edit with uh, the aid to making this easier. I wish there was just some easy way to run a quick filter on it. I have not found a filter for what we need exactly. I could probably write one at some point, but you know. That would take a little more work than I'm willing to do right now. All right. That's all the links, right? So this part is going to be kind of fun, but only takes a second. Oops. When you get your, when you get your groove going, it takes a second. Which I don't have my groove because it's been a crazy day. Good holiday. Hope everybody had a nice holiday. Oh, God. Yeah, definitely off my game. But you do all this with just key commands. My fingers never leave. Ugh. Okay. That's one of the things that Isotop does. It pulls focus back when it fills a, when it finishes a filter. Can be a pain in the butt sometimes, like just then. Oh, Neil, you little rapscallion. Usually I have this in a much wider screen, but for this video, I need to keep it tight, so that's why it's a little harder for me to see. But as you can see, this is pretty much the whole shebang. For some reason, though, my formatting in Quip doesn't always stick to where it needs to be. So I just got to change those every time. Fun times. I know this is exciting stuff, isn't it? Well, you asked for it, and now you get it. But this gets me through all of the show notes super fast. So I'm going to do it, you know. If you try to do this inside of the WordPress interface, which I used to do, uh, it's not fun. It's not fun at all, and it takes a long time. So that's why I came up with this little system in BB Edit, which I still love. And it's just a great little handy tool. All right, so everybody's been formatted here. And now we have the fun parts. So I made these little scripts. I just basically palm, pull down and go, and just do replace alls on these. One, two. Three. Boop. Now we should have a list of, yep, yeah, I got a cut one or two. Just a straight list of HREFs. So, easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. So these guys are done. We're going to save these out. I just like running a D click on just about everything. We've got our DAWs, or not our DAWs, but our interface is pretty well dialed in, so I don't have to do like any denoising or anything. It's because Brian and I both use the same interface, the Studio 192 from PreSonus. Love that thing. So now we're going to come back over here. We're going to add a new post. Grab the title. And I've got another one open because privacy.com was our sponsor this week. So I just grabbed that block right there. Brian's still writing the notes, so that's TBD. I don't have show art yet, but I do have all of these. 
And this is episode 374. This shortener is part of Simple Podcast Press. We only use it for two things, the URL shortener and the inline player for the website. Because that's all I like about it. And fill this URL for the player so I don't accidentally publish it with that. So, and we're going to publish this uh, for, whoops. Midnight PST or one after. So that'll be a scheduled post. Save that for now. Quick preview. Just to make sure I can hit all the links right. Boom, 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 boom. Looks good. All right. Kill that preview. Kill this old post. And one more time just for good measure. And at this point, we are done with this until Brian puts in his notes so let's keep that there for now now we have we go back to logic now and i've got as you can see i have templates for all different shows so this will be grumpy old geeks and we're going to drag in our intro to start with just to have it and we're going to go to in progress go to grumpy old geeks 374 this will be me this will be Brian. Whoops, wrong one. I'm in a hurry today. What do you want? It's Monday. I'll give myself a little room here. Do, 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 do. I always do this manually on the import. I'm hitting Shift Command I and bringing these things in because dragging them in has some side effects that generally don't end well. So it's just much easier to go ahead and just drop them in that way. So I'm going to edit this in a minute, but I wanted you to see that. So we're just going to save this out to GG374. Save that puppy. Move the audio files around. And for now, that's going to be it for this video. Be back in a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to edit this lovely piece of audio and the way this usually works is you, you see there's two chunks of audio here what I've learned over the years now using Zencaster is that anything past the 30 minute mark you run into the possibility of drift so that's why we stop it and start it again but this is going to be a fast edit it's going to be kind of frenetic so I'm going to do this in real time everything you're going to see is real time and it's going to be a lot of motion, so if you get queasy, it might be a little much for you. But uh, I just wanted to get this out there because everybody's asking about how we do this the same day. And this is it. So we've got almost an hour of audio uh, with a couple breaks in here. So this should be about a 50-minute episode, so we'll see how fast we can do this edit. Now, we've got... You're going to see me doing this a lot during the whole process because I manually remove silence as we go. Because uh, I don't trust Logic's built-in system for removing silence because you lose some subtleties, you lose breaths and things like that, and it can be a pain in the butt to go back and like add that stuff in and do it manually. So I have found over the years of doing this that it's you know it's just easier to do it as you go, and it is kind of zen. You'll see what I mean as as we go here. So. As you can see, I just do a lot of zooming and pushing and pulling. And what we're going to start here with is... This episode is sponsored by Privacy.com. It's like a burner phone for credit cards. To sign up for free and get a $5 credit, go to Privacy.com slash GOG. That's $5 free to spend anywhere by just signing up. Privacy.com slash GOG. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Did you labor over your Labor Day, Jason? Of course. Your Labor Day, Jason? Of course I did. Nah, and there's yeah. no there's, there's no way that I cannot labor, unlabor. That's it. Right. There's no unlabor for me. No unlaboring. <laughs> no no un conscious unlaboring. Unlaboring. <laughs> no conscious unlaboring. Me. No unlaboring. Just unlabor for me. No conscious unlaboring. <laughs> yes, it was. Laboring. <laughs> yes, there was no. I just said laboring. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah. Now I had to make up for 
So once the baseline stuff is done at the beginning, because we usually stop and start a little bit and just getting the getting the feel for the show, bring it into it. Now I jack the speed up because from here on out, I just did this show. So I know basically where everything's supposed to be. And you'll just see me tightening things up as we go along. And if they run into cross or if I run across anything, I will let you know as we go. Being broken for a couple days and uh, some other stuff. But I'm back 100%. Access, uh, I have a hot tub and a hot tub when you're broken really helps. Excellent. Because uh, I have a hot tub. And a hot tub when you're broken really helps. That's true. It is a, it's a wonderful thing to have when your muscles are sore. Yeah, I wish I would have remembered it the first day when it happened. <laughs> Took me two days. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. I've got a hot tub somewhere around here. I should go get in that. Right. Oh, you're a weird man, Jason. I am. I what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So I've got a bit of follow up. Uh, the, as we discussed the other week, the, the $30 million each, roughly, that Uber and Lyft, which are companies that don't make any money, but they were able to make any money, <laughs> but they were able to find $30 million each to fight the battle against the, uh, what do they call that, AB5 here in California, which would uh, basically push these companies into recognizing that their drivers are actually employees. Um, they seem to, they've, they've gotten another setback. They lost another battle here in California on Friday. State senators on the Appropriations Committee voted for AB5. So now we'll move on to the Senate floor for a final vote. So $60 million got them buckets so far. Oh, good. But see, yes. you know how many balloons they could have bought for that? A lot of balloons. So if AB5 does pass the full Senate, it will essentially disrupt the business model championed and cherished by Silicon Valley itself. Uber, Lyft, and other app-based gig economy companies rely on hundreds of thousands of independent contractors to give rides, deliver food, etc. And uh, AB5 will reclassify them as employees, which will change everything. They will get labor protections. They will get benefits. They will get unemployment insurance. They will get healthcare subsidies, paid parental leave, overtime pay, workers' compensation, paid rest breaks, and a guaranteed $12 minimum hourly wage. And perhaps most importantly, they will be able to unionize. Basically, well, they get to be people. <laughs> they get to be people, but they also might just get to be fired. That because, is also true. Yeah, because Lyft and Uber might just take their toys and go home, just to prove a point. So this could backfire on the state of California, but you know. But by thank far. God we have all those scooters laying around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, also, uh, some follow-up on the Apple hack thing that we talked about last week, the websites that were using all the zero days and all that stuff. And uh, I mentioned that on a site that I had found that they said it was uh, Middle Eastern. Well, not quite. Turns out it was China. And uh. China, China was going after the Uyghurs again. So this is what that was for. So, uh, yeah, yeah, blame China. Well, that, that seems to be the thing to do right now. Like, you know, if Star Wars were shot today, everybody on the Empire on the Death Star would be Chinese, not British. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And uh, I found this one over at Science. Death Star would be Chinese, not British. And uh, I found this one over at Science alert. This talks about something that we've talked about many times. It says, before you blame screen time for teen mental health issues, read this. Okay. <laughs> and it, <laughs> okay. And it talks about some new studies that are saying that there really isn't a correlation between depression and screen time for kids. Right. Which uh, is interesting. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah, interesting. I, I have a three-year-old as listeners to the show most likely know, so I spent an inordinate... It's very yeah, interesting. I, I have a three-year-old as listeners... Uh, is interesting. It's very interesting. I have a three-year-old as listeners to the show most likely know, so I spend an inordinate amount of time uh, reading every article that pops up about these things because we are desperately trying to figure out, I mean, obviously, you can't go wrong with limiting screen time, but uh, this is the world that we live in now, and screen time is a reality, especially if you know, we're out to dinner and you'd like to enjoy your dinner sitting next to us. Um, <laughs> exactly. so, so, yeah, I, but this very, feels very much, uh, every article I read is contradictory. Every single mm -hmm. one. This is, this is eggs are good, eggs are bad. I was going to say, <laughs> this, this is new eggs. Yes, this is the new eggs. Screen time is the new eggs. So, um, yeah, I read, I read through the study as well. The correlation is definitely not necessarily there, but uh, this, again, the study just focuses on depression. Um, right. There are so many other aspects involved here. Is on depression right there are so many other aspects involved here um, but uh, I, I understand you have a theory i have a theory that's right <laughs> and what I, my theory is that these kids have grown up with screens they know nothing but screens their whole lives so i think they have you know figured out how to use them it's probably. the new normal it is the new normal i think the parents are the issue here because i think the parents are getting depressed and that is getting to them it's properly. the new normal thanks for talking over me properly. brian it's the new normal it is the new normal I think the parents are the issue here. So I think the parents are getting depressed and that is getting passed down to the kids because parents like, you know, people of our age and, you know, in the, in the same you know, range who grew up in a land that didn't have screens until we were like, you know, in our like teens and twenties, mm. we see everything now as is different than they do. You know, we look at Instagram and we're comparing our blooper reel, which is our day-to-day -day lives with everybody else's highlight reel. And right. it so this is, this is really and, just us as parents going. And, right. So this is, this is really just, and it makes you depressed. And, right. So this is, this is really just us as parents going, Hey, you damn hippies. I think so. I think it's tricky down, you know, economics when it comes to depression and screen time. That's a theory that I have. It could be completely bunk, but, you know, just throw it out there. I think the parents need to learn how to cope, and then that will trickle down to the kids. Yeah, I, I, yes. I, I think there's a middle As with all things in the world, what I think we're going to end up finding is that eggs are both good and bad. Uh, screen time is both good <laughs> and bad. Uh, all things, nothing comes without a price. There's no free lunch. Uh, all things in moderation, right? Like, I, I don't necessarily see screen time as a bad thing as long as it's balanced with get outside, get some vitamin D, and run your ass off for a while to burn off some calories. And, and yeah, some I mean, the poison, yeah, the poison is in the dose. Exactly. You know? There you go. Yeah, look, we solved everything. <laughs> and I talk over him, too. It's not just him. And, and some energy. Yeah, the poison is in the dose. Exactly. You know? There you go. Yeah, look, we solved everything. <laughs> okay, fuck it. I'm going home. No way I am home. I never leave. Yeah. Well, somebody just has to pay us for, you know, solving everything. In the news. I like to tell myself which the segments are because that way it just makes it easier to figure out where the hell we're starting instead of having to go back to the notes every time. Makes it easy. You know, solving everything. Anthony Lewandowski is back in the news. If you remember mm -hmm. from, from the Waymo Google lawsuit not too long ago, Anthony Lewandowski is the engineer who used to work at Google for self-driving cars mm -hmm. and left and created a middle company called Auto, which was a self-driving trucking company that was then mm -hmm. subsumed by Uber. Right. And the lawsuit, the original lawsuit was that uh, that Uber was stealing trade secrets from Waymo for the self-driving cars. That mm -hmm. got handled pretty pretty handily. They were only in court for four days, but we had to listen to it for months. Anyway, 
they didn't really do much with Anthony back then. He kind of was on the sidelines, and I think it's because they wanted him to be free and clear of it so they could just go after him criminally, which right. is what they've done. 33 federal charges of theft and attempted theft of trade secrets. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Well, he, yeah. as far as we can tell, he did kind of do that. Yeah. No, <laughs> if, and if convicted, a uh, maximum sentence of 10 years in prison and a fine of $250,000 on each of the 33 counts. All right. All right. Well, they took a gamble. Uh, seems to be losing. Yeah, he pled not guilty, and he posted a $2 million secured bond and has to wear an ankle monitor until at least September 4th, which is tomorrow, and he's going to go to court. So, well, the say, this, he's, it's a self-driving ankle monitor. <laughs> it's a self-driving ankle monitor. Well, the say, this, he's, it's a self and he's going to go to court. So, well, the say, this, he's, it's a self-driving ankle monitor. <laughs> it's a self-driving. When you're hearing this, he's on the plus side, it's a which is tomorrow, and he's going to go to court. So, He's going to go to court, so... On the plus side, it's a... It's a self-driving ankle monitor. <laughs> it's a self-driving ankle monitor. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, like court, so... It. On the plus side, it's a... It's a self-driving ankle monitor. <laughs> it's a self-driving ankle monitor. <laughs> oh, my God. So, we'll see how this one plays out, but I think this guy's screwed. Yeah, I think he is, too. I think uh, I'll, I'll, his gamble did not pay off. All the money's are going to go bye-bye. He's going to spend a little time behind bars. Yeah, I think Uber basically did the deal with Google just so they could get free and clear, and then threw him under the bus, because he got fired, like, pretty much right after the first lawsuit started to happen. Like, yeah. get out. Get out toxic. <laughs> You did yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm hoping you're in. You did yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. You did yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm hoping you're enjoying your Apple card. Um, some articles have now come out saying that, uh, well, Apple recently has a very tarnished represent, <laughs> a reputation regarding privacy, given the hacking that has been going on, um, that China was apparently behind. But, uh, you know, people buy into the Apple privacy thing and then assume that their Apple card might be very private. Uh, the article I found over at Engadget gets into some kind of weird stuff about adults and sex sites and uh, the backlash against them and how, you know, this may be found out and that could be a bad thing. But if you're listening to the show and you enjoy your adult entertainment, you would never use your Apple card to pay for that because, you know, privacy.com slash GOG. Exactly. Come on. <laughs> Come on. But uh, if you, honestly, who pays for porn anymore? You don't have to. There's that as well. Uh, but the other aspect of this that gets interesting is the fact that, of course, Apple did not build up this entire infrastructure themselves. They basically white labeled their credit card through Goldman Sachs, and yeah. Goldman Sachs will continue to use your data. <laughs> They say they will never share or sell data to third parties for marketing or advertising, and uh, so they aren't using it, uh, they aren't mining it, and they aren't sharing it with uh, their other people. But uh, they will terminate you for transactions considered illegal goods or services or on illegal gambling sites. Well, that's so, pretty much every credit gambling sites. Well, that's pretty much every credit card under the sun. Yes, yes, so it is. It's, so basically, you. It is. So basically, you have a credit card, and it's exactly like every other credit card, except this one just has an. <laughs> Apple logo on it, which yes, is And keeping fine. with it being exactly like every other credit card, uh, an author, Jeffrey A. Fowler, over the Washington Post, uh, did an article called The Spy in Your Wallet. Credit cards have a privacy problem. No shit. Uh, and he bought two bananas, one purchased with a popular Chase Amazon Prime Rewards Visa and the other with Apple's card. And then he then tried everything he could to follow the data to see what happened with privacy around these transactions. And there was zero difference between the cards. So the Apple card is no more private than any other credit card. Yeah. Okay. I'm not surprised by that. No. One iota. <laughs> one iota. No. It's just, it's, it's interesting because you can't even use it on a lot of sites because there are no credit card numbers on it. You don't okay. get a credit card number. But I use it for food and gas. So that's about it. And booze. Food, yeah. gas, and booze. There you go. So the essentials. That's kind of it. Yeah, it is just the essentials. Oh, and it did automatically switch over all of my Apple purchases to the card as well. Oh, so anytime I do like buy an app or a game, it goes on that card automatically. And then you get cash back. So okay. I prefer my miles. I don't want it. I, I'm not going anywhere. I, I need Tony to stick in miles. <laughs> yes. And in the delicious irony section of news. Oh, yes. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey's Twitter account was compromised. Don't you mean hacked? Well, whatever. <laughs> I know. I just, it's funny that, you know, they use the word compromised. Yes. In, Instead of hacked. Yes. So, well, they also use hacked because, you know, AI, machine learning. Because the first paragraph <laughs> is the personal account of Twitter. Inc. Chief Executive Jack Dorsey was hacked Friday and filled with erratic and racist tweets in a high-profile security misstep at the social media company. Or back when I was working with fans, just meant that the lead singer got really drunk in the back of a bus last night. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah it was hacked. 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 He's just dehydrated. He did not OD. He's just dehydrated. He just needs a couple days off. We'll reschedule the dates. But remember, not OD, just dehydrated. Dehydrated, yes. <laughs> so they are throwing the mobile provider under the bus saying the phone number associated with the account was compromised due to a security oversight by the mobile provider. I said in the statement, this allowed an unauthorized person to compose and send tweets via text message from the phone number. That issue is now resolved. Uh, and this does raise the question of how secure Twitter's protections are for the accounts of world leaders such as, say, oh, I don't know, President Trump. Yeah, uh, I'm sure this is one of the, the SIM hacks, you know, where you social engineer a new SIM card and then take mm -hmm. it over. It's, I, I, that probably has to be it. It does so. beg the question, though, if hackers uh, got access to Donald Trump's account and post racist shit, would we notice? <laughs> if a tree falls in the woods. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, uh, well, you and I. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. So exciting, isn't it? Oh my God. And, uh, well, you and I do not understand how Pinterest is an actual company that is worth money because all it does is basically infringe on copyrights for a living. It makes billions. Uh, they are doing something that's kind of good. They're they're working towards curbing misinformation on vaccines, as we've known. A tide of this is this is mainstreaming uh, this insanity, this nonscience by calling it vaccine hesitancy. That's not what oh, it is. God. Do not mainstream <laughs> it like that. Uh, the vaccine hesitancy, reluctance to get inoculated because of unfounded fears and misinformation, is rising in the U.S. and throughout the world, as we know. Uh, the WHO has identified vaccine hesitancy as one of the dumb ten shittery. Most urgent... call it dumb shittery for yes. God's sake. I know. As one of the ten most urgent public health challenges of the year, and social media is, of course, incredibly responsible for this, as it is for all fake news, right? So you know that's going on. <laughs> so and Jenny McCarthy. That's how yes. we have to blame. That's true. Last year, Pinterest. 
So, you know, that's going on. Social media and Jenny McCarthy. That's how we have to blame. That's true. Last year, Pinterest disabled search for terms such as vaccines and cancer cure. And while you are on Pinterest, searching for a cure for cancer is beyond me. But people do this sort of stuff. Coop was down for a few minutes. <laughs> I guess so. Jesus, what's wrong with people? Uh, but they're taking a bigger step right now. They're uh, providing information from only leading public health institutions, including the WHO, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the WHO established Vaccine Safety Net. So they will not show comments, recommendations, or ads. They're uh, going to be taking down crazy stuff. And you can basically, if you're posting anything with the, the tags that uh, relate to vaccines or things like that, you can only post stuff that's from vetted organizations. Um, now, I want to know why the WHO, the CDC, vetted organizations. Now, I want to know why the WHO, the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatrics, all these people, why do they have Pinterest accounts? What, don't they have anything better to do? Yeah, I know. Especially with the budgets that are out there for this stuff right now. Pinch should be the first thing to go. Oh, man. <laughs> but uh, the principle here, as the article says, is worthy. With free speech comes responsibility, which is something that we could use on the internet. Free speech is not free, people. You gotta do stuff. You do. Uh, and uh, Amazon. I read... You do. Uh... You gotta do stuff. And uh, Am... Stuff. And uh, Amazon. I read mm -hmm. this article over at BuzzFeed News. Cause... By the way, if there's a little pop or something and you just want to clean it up real quick... Fade tool. It's on my right mouse button. Set up here. Fade tool. So I just left or right click and drag it across like that. Or like, you know, you can play around with it and move it around. Do stuff. And uh, so that pops now gone. There you go. Pro tip. Amazon. I read this article over at BuzzFeed News because I'm still shaking my head. BuzzFeed is an actual news organization now. Okay. Back, back in my day, it was just cat photos and listicles. But nowadays, they have an article called Amazon's Next Day Delivery System has brought chaos and carnage to America's streets. But the world's biggest retailer has a system to escape the blame. Yes, it's called contractors. That's what this entire article is about. It's like, okay, Amazon hires contractors who are then responsible for having employees and training them and making sure that their vehicles are safe. Right. Shockingly, <laughs> the, uh, the, yeah, the companies that they outsource to are basically horrible, horrible companies, mm -hmm. just riddled with, you know, theft and gambling addiction and cocaine usage and peeing in the van a lot too, which is interesting. I don't wanna, if you ever get a wet package from Amazon, you might want to <laughs> put some rubber gloves on before you open that one or just get a return label and send it back. But it's a long read, but it's really good. They go through a lot of different things with a lot of different companies talking. They start off with one poor woman who was killed um, right before Christmas in 2016. By one of the one of the drivers for one of these companies, who apparently that company had taken out some safety devices in the vans that could have prevented the accident because they thought it was cheaper and they didn't really need them anymore. It's like, oh, everybody's driving. Yeah, every, everything's going fine. Nobody's getting an accident. We don't need those safety devices anymore. See, everything's right. Oh, just shit. Oh, I guess the safety devices does. were stopping the accidents. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so it's a good read if you want to check it out. But yeah, it's Amazon just outsources everything that they can and mm -hmm. denies responsibility. It's like, hey, we didn't hit them. Not our not our problem. Mm -hmm. So and even I wonder how it works with that uh, new system where they'll even like you know help you buy your own van. Are you then beholden to Amazon? I doubt it. I'm sure it's in the TOS somewhere that you hit somebody. It's your problem, not That's our money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man. Movie Pass is back in the news. <laughs> how is this still a thing? I, when I tell you these numbers, you're just gonna laugh. Movie Pass laid off roughly a third of its staff, including its entire team focused on relationships with movie theaters. <laughs> <laughs> You'd gotta think that would be a big thing. And apparently there were only two people that were doing that. So that's seven that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that explains a lot, actually. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, so they laid off seven people, which is a third of its staff. They're down to 12 employees. Now wow. here's the thing, here's the kicker. At the, the company's height in 2017, the staff numbered around 40. Not 40 enough. people caused all this havoc. 40. Not enough. 40 people. Around 40. Not enough. 40 people caused all this havoc right. and the problem is because there were only 40 people yes exactly there's no way they could have done what they did with 40 people no way and they didn't well, so it makes sense well, that, yeah actually this all tracks so mm -hmm. uh, this next one i thought was pretty interesting the shift towards open source conversational ai mm. this is a adventure beat so what is this contractors talking to each other <laughs> yeah that's adventure beat so what is this your beat so what is this contractors talking to each other <laughs> yeah that's all <laughs> it's the programmers on IRC. That's the conversational <laughs> AI. What's up, Joe? What's shaking? Nothing. Let's go. What's AI? Nope. No. <laughs> Can I borrow a couple? It's sure. money working today. Uh, so uh, a lot of big companies are actually open sourcing their, their systems, their AI mm -hmm. systems, okay. in an attempt to make them all better, which is interesting. Right. Uh, Uber actually released an open source AI library called Plato, mm -hmm. or the Plato Research Dialogue System. Purtis. <laughs> uh, Cisco, yeah. Cisco open sourced its mind meld conversational AI platform. So they're more by Star Trek. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of different <laughs> platform. And then we're promptly sued by Star Trek. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of different companies that are doing this. And it's interesting. And I, I think it really kind of came out of Google when they open source TensorFlow mm -hmm. back in 2015. So it's like, okay, we're going to use our system, but we can really use some help building this because we don't know what the hell we're doing. Our decision trees and uh, contractors <laughs> in the Philippines aren't really cutting the, cutting the job right now. So let's, uh, let's open source this and see if we can get some help. And uh, so we'll see. We'll see how this plays out. But I just thought it was an interesting uh, term that, that these companies were doing. That. I figured this would all be super heavy duty proprietary because they want to win the AI wars. But I guess it turns out these conversational AI systems actually aren't that important. No. If it was, if it was really that important, they wouldn't be releasing yes. the source. They would keep, they would keep the IP as much as they could. Yep. Yep. And since we don't have brick a brack. I know in here is screwed up somewhere. I, and since we don't have brick. Yep. Yep. Kill that bit. As much as they could. Yep. And since we don't have brick or brack, I just had to throw this one in here. This comes from the next web, which I don't get why this is an article in the next web, but it says, you're still you when you're drunk, science says. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they were. They did a bunch of tests on people who were sober and people who were drunk. And it turns out your moral compass is pretty much intact when you're drunk. You kind of lose some empathy. You still know you're doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but you, you do lose that little empathy curve. But at the at the end of the day, uh, if you if you if you weren't going to kill somebody when you were sober, you're not going to kill somebody when you're drunk. So, awesome. 
if you, if you get drunk and kill somebody, you might want to watch out for that guy when he's sober because he still might kill you. I'm a very happy drunk, so science says I'm a happy guy. I like this. Okay, no, that one's pretty much dead there. Media candy, do it, do it. Okay, and before we do media candy, I always put the ads for the show right after the first new segment because that gets us pretty much to about 20 minutes. And then we go in here and we grab our Star Trek sound because we can. And line that up, kill the gain on it a bit. And eyeball it. I'm a happy guy. I like this. All right. So you didn't see this in the other video, but we do the ads at the end. And I believe it's there. Nothing you need to worry about there, Jason. No. It's even a no. sweeter deal if you buy it in Asia as you get a dual SIM phone so you can... Clash Royale. Clan is G-O-G. Ready? You take mm -hmm. the bold. Okay. All right. Ad time. So this is our ad here. Since we did it at the very end. Got that. We're back up to here. Whoops, Daisy. There. Whoops, a Daisy. I'm back to here, and I know this is media candy, so I'll just drop this in here for now. And let's check this ad. Now that's why it was ahead. Okay. Boom, 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 do. Got to entertain yourself somehow. And bring this in about there. This episode is sponsored by Privacy.com. Privacy is the first payments product that keeps your My bad. personal information private while being even more convenient than using a regular credit card online. Online. Privacy lets you generate a brand. A little more. Line. Privacy lets you generate a brand new Visa card number for every purchase you make online with one click with their browser extension or mobile app. We all buy stuff online more and more, and privacy gives you a temp credit card number for every site you buy from. Never forget to cancel subscriptions or trials ever again. That alone is worth the price of admission, and oh yeah, the price of admission is free. They make their money the same way debit cards do, with interchange fees paid by merchants. You know how skeptical we are of free services here on GOG, and these guys actually have a business model to back it up, which gives them the grumpy old geek seal of approval. We actually reviewed this product when they first launched, and we're not just pimping the product because they paid us. We're actual customers, and we love what they're doing. And if you use a password manager, of course you do, because you listen to this show, you should use this. You don't use the same password everywhere. Why use the same credit card number, especially on those porn sites? Sign up takes less than two minutes, and like we said, it is completely free. So far, they saved their customers over a... So far... I knew I screwed up there. Completely free. So far, they've saved their customers over $115 million in unwanted and unauthorized charges. You can freeze cards and set spending limits. Cards lock to merchants, making them useless to thieves and hackers. You can protect yourself from online fraud with virtual card numbers. And you can delete cards anytime and kiss those forgotten subscriptions goodbye. To sign up for free and get a $5 credit, just go to privacy.com slash GOG. That's $5 free to spend anywhere by just signing up. Privacy.com slash GOG. This one's a no-brainer, so get on it now. Privacy.com slash GOG. Get that $5 free. On Saturday... I went out to the Rose Bowl for the Pasadena Daydream show and saw the Cure play. And as the Slicing of Eyeballs article says, the Cure turns Pasadena Daydream into the best day of the summer with a scorching set. I'm very sorry you missed it, Jason. It was stunning. Yeah, me too. Me too. But fortunately, from this article, somebody posted the whole show. So you can see the whole show from the uh, from, from your hot tub while you were recuperating, Jason. <laughs> exactly. How were the VIP tickets? Did you get good seats? There are no seats. Uh, it was outdoors well, on the golf area. Yeah, no, it was great. It was it was uh, perfectly positioned. Um, you don't want to be too close anyway, so you can see everything with easy access to uh, decent bathrooms and beer. Uh, it was awesome. But I have to say, I didn't go until later because you know, kid and babysitter, so there's no way I was gonna spend all day out there. But people that did, uh, if you watch the show on the YouTube while you're in the hot tub, you will be cooler than most of the people were at the show. It was 95 degrees for most of the day out there. And no shade? Uh, they, they did the best they could. There were some trees and they put up a bunch of tents everywhere. So they Ooh. did what they could, but it was packed. I mean, there was more than 25,000 people there. Uh, it was pretty intense. And it was a great show. I had a wonderful time. So I'm sorry. I, the pixies. Uh, I didn't. I made it for the very end of the Pixie set because, again, kid and babysitter. So we only wanted to pay so uh -huh. much. But they were good. They sounded great. So I got to hear okay. two or three songs by them. Saw some of the throwing muses and then saw all of the gear set until the very end because we decided we wanted to get home before 2 a.m. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, very, it was a very good time. And I got to tell you, you saw all of the gear set until the very end because we decided we wanted to get home before 2 a.m. Saw some of the throwing muses and then saw all of the gear set until the very end because we decided we wanted to get home before 2 a.m. Okay. So it was a very good time. And I got to tell you, your ticket did some good. Decided we wanted to get home before 2 a.m. Okay. <laughs> so it was very, it was a very good time. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it was very, it was a very good time. And I got to tell you, your ticket did some good. Uh, I, you know, because I don't know anybody that's like in their 20s anymore. So the idea of a last minute ticket, I offered it to people, but people were busy because once you're over 20, you have plans and lives. Uh, but I did find a lone, pimply uh, little teenage boy 
uh, wearing his very old Cure shirt, and I made his, uh, his hopefully his entire year by gifting him your VIP pass. Excellent, excellent. That's that's all I could hope for. Like nobody wants to buy it. Find somebody outside who can't get in and give it to him. You did just that. I did Perfect. just that. So they went very yeah. well. Sure he's very guy had to shit himself. He's like, you're giving me a VIP pass? <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm old. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. That's it. That's the stuff of legend. Yeah, pass it forward. So uh, I found a very long form article over the New York Times about Neil Young. Uh, now we've made fun of Neil Young for quite some time because he had his uh, Pono device that he was trying to sell and his high quality audio streaming service that he was trying to push, none of which went very well. Uh, but this article is great. It's called Neil Young's Lonely Quest to Save Music. And if you read through the entire article, it's awesome. And uh, he says low quality streaming is hurting our songs and our brains. Uh, they posit is he right? And they do get into some of the science. And yeah, high quality stuff is much better. Um, it, it just is. It sounds better. But the reason I put this article in our show notes is because this guy should be on our podcast. Really? He doesn't just hate bad music. Neil Young is crazy. I'm going to read some quotes here. Neil Young is crankier than a hermit being stung by bees. He hates Spotify. He hates Facebook. Neil Young is crazy. I'm going to read some quotes here. Neil Young is crazy. Neil Young is crazy. I'm going to read some quotes here. Neil I'm going to read some quotes. I'm going to read some quotes. hate bad music. I'm going to read some quotes. Yeah, I can't save that. Neil Young is crazy. I'm going to read some quotes here. Neil Young is crankier than a hermit being stung by bees. He hates Spotify. He hates Facebook. He hates Apple. He hates Steve Jobs. He hates what digital technology is doing to music. Am I? Uh, I'm only one person standing there going, "Hey, this is fucked up." He shouts, ranting away. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. There's another one down here. It's like a. So he's like, he hates everyone in Silicon Valley that produces, of course, and what it produces, the culture of digital everything, which is basically a load of toxic, mind-destroying crap. It's anti-human. <laughs> I'm not like oh, Mark Zuckerberg. He continues his voice taking a turn. He knows where he fucked up. Just, just the look on his face. He says, wagging his finger towards the television screen, <laughs> where the Facebook chief executive is giving sworn testimony before a panel of lawmakers. You know, he came to me in a dream the other night, and I felt really sorry for him. He said he was just sitting there sweating and kind of didn't know how to talk because he fucked up so badly. <laughs> Oh, you know, I'm not a fan of Neil Young's music at all, but I'm a fan of Neil Young. That's <laughs> this is a very long article, so you got to go read it. You're gonna have a good chuckle about it. <laughs> all right. And uh, I also saw a review for something I'm not gonna watch because I think it would depress me too much. But it seems in our wheelhouse, so I'm including it here for anybody that wants to be depressed. Jawline reviewed a chilling look at the making of a teen influencer. This is a, a film by Lisa Manlip, the director, um, and it's on Hulu. And it's about the teen influencer gauntlet. And uh, one she found a subject in particular, Austin Tester, who was kind of off the thing. And I just, oh boy, man, I don't know what we're yeah, doing with these kids. Right? I read this review and I, I opened up Hulu and then I thought better of it. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at it and I'm staring at it. And I'm like, you know, every single documentary I've seen about Instagram and YouTubers and all of this just makes me feel really bad for these people. And yeah. I'm like, you guys are really just, you're, you're creating nothing and think this is going to be a lifestyle and this is how you're going to make a living for the rest of your life. And it's just, you delusional. Just, there's all these older people around them that are just bad, bad people trying to make a buck and they do oh, yeah. not care about these kids. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm just like, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to hit play. I'm just like, you know what I need? I need to finish up their season one of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. That's going to put me in a better mood. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go watch that. Sadly, though, I will not be watching season three of The OA since it was canceled by Netflix. And apparently a lot of people, well, actually not a lot of people, because if it was a lot of people, then the show wouldn't have gotten canceled. <laughs> but My three season rule stands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they've got, the fans have a petition of nearly 80,000 people trying to get Netflix to bring it back. They've done, they bought a billboard, they've had rallies, and they're really trying to get Netflix to change their mind. And I mm-hmm. don't know if it's going to work. The thing is, I don't think 80,000 people is enough to cover the budget. But no, it's not. Yeah. And I watch, and I mm-hmm. don't know if it's going to work. The thing is, I don't think, the thing is, I don't think 80,000 work. The thing is, I don't think 80,000. people's don't know if it's going to work i don't think it's going to work i don't think eighty thousand people's enough to cover the budget uh, no it's not yeah. the budget uh, no it's not yeah. and i watched season one of the oa i mm-hmm. thought it was weird and i really enjoyed it and i went back to start watching the second season and i'm just like you know yeah Second season, and I'm just like, you know, eh, I just, uh, I couldn't get myself to even press play. <laughs> I'm just like, right. uh, it was, I mean, it was a good show, but it was a slog on season one. And I'm just like, I don't know if I have that in me anymore. So, you know, well, I'm, I feel for these people because, you know, I've had shows that I love taken out from underneath me. I mean, hell, I used to run safefarscape.com. And uh, <laughs> I said boxes of crackers to Sci Fi Channel executives saying safefarscape. I've been on the other side of this. I know what it's like, and it sucks. So we'll see. Well, you we'll know what I like about what I, what I would like to see Netflix and the Amazons and, and the Hulu's of the world do, which we talk about a bit in this article. It says a uh, fandom of Sense8 was able to persuade Netflix to make a two-hour finale for the, for the drama. So when there are enough people running these things and, and pushing for, for continuing the show, at least kick in a finale. Wrap it yeah, up. Exactly. Give them an hour, give them two hours to, to finish up the story. There's enough people that care about this. Just don't drop them and leave them hanging. And don't take 10 years like they did with Deadwood. I mean, <laughs> granted, Deadwood came on the heels of the Game of Thrones finale, and then they put out the Deadwood movie to kind of wrap up Deadwood. And that was the complete, that, like, HBO took their time and they did it right, mm-hmm. which is why there was not a single bad thing said on Twitter about the Deadwood movie. And then you compare and contrast that to Game of Thrones. It's right. like, okay, maybe we should have given Game of Thrones a two-hour wrap-up for the last season instead of giving them the whole season. And do that with, yeah, I think it should be written into these damn contracts. It's like, if you want to yeah. cancel our show, you maybe we have an arc, you're going to pay for the fucking finale and wrap it up. So, yep. because if Netflix keeps doing this, people are going to get gun shy like you are. And I, was say, though, I wonder because you're, you're saying that Deadwood nobody said anything bad about it. I wonder if that's partially because there was ten years in between. I wonder, you know, because the, the, the edges soften about things. You forget plot lines that maybe dropped. I mean, I'm not sure people like you who are crazy go back and watch the entire show before the thing. But yeah. I do wonder if, like, if, if Game of Thrones would have stopped and we would have waited like eight years and then gotten the last episode, would we, well, have we did. Been quite as crazy. <laughs> what, was, what was the delay between season seven and season eight? Was it like was three, like, four years? Three years, I think. Three years. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. They had plenty of time to not make such a shitty show. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's why it came out so shitty is because they had too much time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, I feel for these people. Hopefully, they can at least get a finale out of Netflix. Do the right thing, Netflix. Mm-hmm. And then I found the
But uh, I can't wait to see this this movie that they're making because Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was just a huge part of so many people in those lives. And right. you know, I, I know that people can. If you had that game and you handed it to me right now, I could still do my warehouse run with you know just unbelievable accuracy <laughs> every time. But yeah, I do miss that game. Anyway, so the trailer for that's out. And speaking of trailers, I saw the Terminator Dark Fate trailer. Right. Why? Just why? Did you I watch that trailer? I did. Um, I... Why? <laughs> Did you I, watch I that trailer? I did. Um, I feel about the Terminator series the same way I feel about Aliens. Um, first movie good. Second movie good. I'm done. <laughs> yep, that's pretty much it. They should have cut it too. Yeah, really. Everything after that was crap. Oh man, yeah, because uh, they're, they're looking. Just kill that there. <clears throat> Pardon me. And with that, and the library. Over the Labor Day weekend. Everything after that was crap. Over the Labor Day weekend, I labored to finish the New Earth series. I read book four, Destiny. Well, these are all by Matthew Mather. And I have to say, he surprised me at the end. It's been a while since I've been genuinely caught off guard and surprised by the ending of what I would consider to be popcorn sci-fi. Mm -hmm. So it was worth it for that. Now, having said that, <laughs> okay, it's a four, it's a four book series that should be a two book series. There is a lot in, this, especially in this particularly this last book, a lot of lead up to get to a pretty good ending, pretty good beginning of the book as well, of the series as well. I like the first book a lot. Um, didn't need a lot of this book, but the didn't need a lot. Like if you took book one as is and take book two, three, and four and make them one book that's much shorter, this would be a great series. Okay, <laughs> but as is, it's, it's a lot of extra stuff that you don't need. And uh, I actually found myself yawning quite a bit during this book until I got to the to the apex, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, didn't see that coming, and I do love when that happens. Yeah, it's, it's rare and random. I think it's the last time I had that happen to me was uh. Uh, one of the Brandon Sanderson series. Hmm. It was really yes. good. That was, uh, they did some good stuff with that. But uh, yeah, I've been surprised by a book in a long time, which is maybe why I haven't really gotten into reading as much as I used to do. I've been kind of slacking for a couple months now. Yeah, I tried. And you and I both kind of scaled back our reading a little bit. So, I, yeah, so I've some series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's shit to do. <laughs> yeah, actually, there's a lot of shit to do. It's kind of crazy. But I got, I got so many books that are queued up, but I can't really just get to them yet. So, because they're all like 12 and 14 hours. Yeah. That's, I mean, even a 2X, it's still you know, a day's worth of listening to get through a book. And I just don't have it anymore. Wish I did. Uh, I miss, miss having free time. More of the week. time the australian civil aviation safety authority is current the australian civil aviation safety authority is currently investigating a video that appears to show wait for it a man and using a drone to lift himself off the floor in a chair before casting out a line and going fishing <laughs> he's even got a bottle of beer in the cup holder next to him Oh, this guy's my hero. He's a bit of a hero. So this footage was uploaded to the Facebook page of a Brisbane-based drone seller called UAV Me earlier this month, and it shows him sitting in a metal chair being carried several meters above the water uh, and uh, fishing, and he even appears to have caught a fish. He reels nice. away on his line before being carried back to shore by the drone. <laughs> Naturally, <laughs> the authorities have been quick to say that this is, of course, a really silly idea. It is, but it's great. It's it great. great. But if you try it, you will probably die. Yeah, I love it. I lo yeah, I love it. I love it. And uh, at the bottom, it's like it'll take some time for us to gather the information and analyze to determine what appropriate course of action is next. And it, basically, there's not a book. There's not a rule on the books about not fishing on a drone. <laughs> exactly. And he keeps going saying, for the person on the chair, the risk could be computer errors where the aircraft flies away, or there could be motor failures where the aircraft ends up in an uncontrollable state. <laughs> Best case scenario is the battery sets die and it plunks straight into the water. But that is, you know, if that drone had a had a bug and just took off, yep, you'd be kind of screwed. Well, I don't know. I mean, he wasn't like he wasn't. I don't think he was like belted into the seat. He just falling into the water. Yeah, Fish. but if that, if that drone like just jumps you up like hundred feet real quick, yeah, you, can't, true, you yeah. can't jump. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but hero. This guy's a hero. Fuck more on the week. This guy's my hero. All right. Took a little break there, get some water. We've got some new Patreon subscribers. Try that again. Flub. All right, feedback loop coming to the end. Hero. All right. We've got some new Patreon subscribers. Jo Joseph, Sarong, Ben, and over PayPal, we have Simon, Michael, Stephen C., and Jason and Stephen T. Thank you very much for your various gen gener various generations. Various <laughs> very generous donations. Yes, yes, it's a bitch. Life is a bitch. But thank yes. you guys very much. Those are very generous donations. Thank you. There are also various generations. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hello, follow up to uh, last week, someone was asking us about the services that you could get to go through and remove yourself from public databases. Mm -hmm. And I found Delete Me. Yes. And that's over at joindeletememe.com. Link will be in the show notes. But it's a service where they will basically go through and scrub things for you. And yes. I found a bunch of them, and they were all ridiculously priced. Like, you know, they'll create fake websites for you to get your name bumped out of search results for things. This is just them going through and basically scrubbing you. And yep. it's pretty affordable. It's 129 bucks a year for one person per year. Two people, it's 229 a year, and then you can go up from there. But it, uh, it looks decent. I haven't tried it yet, so caveat emptor. But yeah, it's been reviewed by some pretty big ones. I, I think I first found this over at CNET, and they mm -hmm. said it was decent, but that's CNET. Yeah, and, uh, uh, your yeah. mileage may vary, but yes. It's a, you know, another subscription model, sure. And uh, your, your mileage may vary, but yes. It's a, you know, another subscription model. Your mileage may vary. Yes. Your mileage may vary.
which may vary. Yes. It's a, you know, another subscription model, which drives me crazy. But if they do what they say on the tin, I think it would actually be worth it. Well, this is like human powered, so I can understand why it's a subscription. It's not, yeah, it's not exactly. automatic. Yep. Yeah. All right. And over at Twitter, about everybody in the world sent us articles about uh, the hurricane that's about to hit Florida and and how Florida is gathering electric scooters before Dorian sends them airborne. Because, yes, that could be a problem. Yeah, yeah. Light enough to be blown be. around and slammed into things. And with... Things. And with the batteries exploding, they could just be bombs. Mm-hmm. That's really... That would be bad. That would be bad. So, it's nice that they're leaving the city to do it, that the companies themselves aren't really helping too much. And, yeah, yeah, we'll see what they do. They just don't want their property to be destroyed, I'm sure. Uh, and Cookie and Nathan Sage both sent us this, and this is a, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a tweet from a fairly unsavory character, but uh, yes. about KiwiBots, rolling robots that deliver burritos and smoothies have become a fixture on UC Berkeley's campus thanks to their creepy cute faces and low delivery prices. But while the robots appear to be anonymous, the San Francisco Chronicle reports they're actually operated by remote workers in Colombia who make $2 an hour. AI is people. Yes, yeah, so and the best part about this is the second yeah, so the best part about this is the second image, which shows uh, Fred from Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Machine capturing a bad guy, and over the bad guy's face, who's wearing a mask, it says AI, and he pulls off the mask and says, exploiting developing world workers. <laughs> yeah. That is the best thing ever. Okay. <laughs> and AJ sends us another one, hashtag AI is people, local convenience store called AI by market. The only remotely cutting edge tech is the ability to pay with WeChat money, assuming the AI is the person behind the till. Exactly. <laughs> and Derek writes, and so Lyft scraped some money from my account, over $600 in two days. No recourse, only to contact Chase to take the hit. Lyft doesn't care if you've been hacked. Lyft doesn't care about anything. About anything. <laughs> it's okay. We know uh, that. Yes. And Adam writes in, you guys would be less political. I listen to you guys again. No. Okay. If there was less I, politics and tech, we'd be less political. Yes, I also think uh, English is a second language. I think so, too. Yes, Jim writes, here's one for your favorite AI subject. The government is going to use Alexa, Google, and Fitbit, and Apple data, and AI to flag potentially violent people. This is an article on Gizmodo, and it's called, The plan to use Fitbit data to stop mass shootings is one of the scariest proposals yet. I don't know if I would call it scary, I would call it stupid. stupid. Yes, if they want to create an agency called HARPA, a healthcare counterpart to the Pentagon's research and development arm DARPA, uh, they will reportedly collect volunteer data from a suite of smart devices, including Apple Watches, Fitbits, Amazon Echoes, and Google Homes, in order to identify neuro- neurobehavioral signs of someone heading towards a violent explosive act. Which, of course, is stupid, but unfortunately, it seems to be getting traction in government where they don't understand anything. Uh, I do like this particular, this last quote. The proposed data collection goes beyond absurdity when they mention the desire to collect Fitbit data. I'm unaware of any study linking walking too much and committing mass murder. Yep. <laughs> As for the other technologies, what are these people expecting? Alexa, tell me the best way to kill a lot of people really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Really quickly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, okay, how the hell are you going to glean anything from Fitbit data? Period. Right. Yes. I guess the new watches do have, you know, geo tracking on them, so you can look at actual GPS data and things like that. But, you know, uh, is it opt in? <laughs> and things like that. But, you know, uh, is it opt in? <laughs> I don't know. Yes. And here's yes. the thing. Yeah, if Harpa fails, they also have plans for uh, Groucha, Chica, Gamma, and Zeppa. So we can, we can hit all the March Brothers if we have to, just to get this through Congress. God, I need the sound effect for a drum shot. <laughs> <laughs> And right film sleep repeat writes in, hey guys, what's your view of Ecosia? I understand it's a big algorithm based, but it plants trees. So this is a search engine that if you use it, will plant trees for you. I don't need a search engine that plants trees. I need a search engine that actually returns results, and Bing is not that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Story late, but I got you. Now, we've covered Ecosia on the show before, and yeah. it's it's a fairly silly concept, but it is what it is. Yes. Over at GOG.show, Steve writes in, hey guys, I'm the guy that hangs out in forums and posts nothing, but love this podcast. I had to say something. You're on the top of my podcast playlist. I just bumped my recurring PayPal payment to $8 a month. I, we appreciate it. Mm-hmm. I would do more, but right now, the least is a $1 an episode. I'm also a Grumpy Geek. I'm 47. Working tech, and in most cases, you guys are spot on. There are some occasional differences, but Abhi NASCAR says it best. Differences are healthy. There lies the scope for inquiry, and in inquiry lies the scope for learning. Differences turn unhealthy only when we make them the cause for hatred. Our biggest difference is music, Ryan. In the 90s, where you went with alternative, I went with thrash, so it would be awesome if I could get a shout out to fucking Slayer. There you go. <laughs> All right, shout out to your fucking Slayer. Hey, friend of the show, Mike is a huge fan of that sort of stuff. It's all good. Everybody can listen to whatever they want. I like the $8 a month. I think that's a great pledge for everybody. A bucket episode. Come on. That's way yeah. less coffee these days. <laughs> Seriously, especially if it's one of those uh, spiced lattes that we're coming back into season on. Pumpkin spice latte. Don't be so basic, Jason. Oh, sorry. Sorry. You have noticed that it is Halloween already. It's, it's September it's 95 Halloween. degrees outside. It's Halloween. <laughs> Everywhere you go. I'm like, come on, guys, really? No. Oh, God. Tom, Tom writes in, greeting geeks from Connecticut, the state of confusion. In episode 373, Jason was talking about his camera setup. If you've already taken your home security to the next level, check out a great piece of software called Blue Iris and a great forum called IP Cam Talk. I quickly went from one camera with Blue Iris running on a spare PC to wiring up six cameras on the exterior of the house, a POE switch, and a big old NAS. Typical of any geek hobby, it wasn't cheap, but I've had yeah. lots of fun managing it and getting fellow geeks set up on their own setup. Uh, yeah, and it gets into some of the technical details here. So, yeah, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could have wired cameras. It's just not my house. If it was my house, then uh, we would totally have wired cameras. We'd have turrets on the roof with lasers. <laughs> yeah. If I had my own house, oh, the fun I would have. But uh, thanks for the, the software recommendation. I'll check out Blue Iris because that will work with my, my other cameras. Perfect. Oh, hang on. I'm going to move this one because it ties right into that. And John Jones writes in, episode 373, I do not see the camera recommendation over the ring camera in the notes section. Is it a Logitech? What model with the pan and rotate with zoom? So I, I screwed up last week and I forgot to put them in. So the uh, the one with the pan and tilt is the Amcrest Pro HD 1080p. These are the, it's an older model. You can get these for about 58 bucks right now, but it changes every time I log in. Uh, so look at me for that. And the other camera, which is a really nicer set, is the Logitech Circle 2. That has a really good video quality. The Amcrest has really good video quality too, but it's not as good as the Circle 2. So that's two different systems. I've got three different systems in the house. I've got Logitech, Circle 2, and regular circles. Then I've got the Amcrest cameras, and I've got the shitty ring cameras. So uh, <laughs> links for the Logitech Circle 2 and Amcrest cameras will be in the show notes. But I recommend if you go to Amazon and look for the uh, the Amcrest ones, it will say that there's uh, the Amcrest ones. It will say the Amcrest ones, it will say that
Sleep Too Little writes us. It's been about five months since I deleted my Facebook and I wanted to see if I could get back in. It seems I could, but I have to confirm my identity via code being sent to the phone I no longer have, or I can upload my photo ID. What the fuck? Let me think here. My options are passport, driver's license, marriage certificate, or national ID card. They will keep the ID for more than 30 days, but no more than a year. Sucky Zucky can sucky my Zucky before I give them that. And what, <laughs> why the fuck isn't my account deleted? I will sacrifice my happiness in the name of your grumpiness. Long live GOG. Uh, your account's not deleted because they, they jacked the time up for deletion. Yeah, yep, the time for deletion is up now, so. Yeah, I think six months, so you've missed it by a... G. Your account's not deleted because they, they jacked the time up for deletion. Yep. Yep, the time for deletion is up now. So yeah, I think it's six months. So you've missed it by that much. Yeah, and actually, I don't actually blame them for having to have uh, some sort of actual ID once you because you set your phone, and if you don't have the phone anymore, then oh, that's a problem. I mean, you know, they got they got to do something to verify it's you. Yeah, actually, they yeah. do. Um, I guess so, they could have done it with email address. But so, yeah, they could do it with email, but uh, yeah, they don't. Yeah, so. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Yeah, so. No, they don't. Here's the deal: you're better off without Facebook. So, yes. so Sucky Sucky can. Yeah, I like Sucky Sucky can suck my Sucky. <laughs> All right, Alexandra writes in. I don't know if it's Alexandra or Alexandre. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll Alexandra. Yes, we'll go with that. Hey guys, so I heard. I, hey guys, so I heard you about not having. Hey guys, so I heard. I, we'll go with that. Hey guys, so I heard you about not having a designer and whatnot. This may not be much, but check out this little design I made for y'all. Feel free to use it for anything you want, including merchandise, free of charge, of course. I really hope you like it. And he sent us a couple uh, links to. I, I, what I really love is he, he's got a cup logo there, and he made my avatar much bigger than yours. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, dude. We know who you, who you like on the show, and uh, he did an affinity design. Nice. Thank you. We will uh, endeavor to get around to something about this at some point, hopefully. Yep. Amanda writes in, Jason, thank you for posting the app load you use for Mac. This one made some very useful stuff, and I appreciate the input. Cool grumpings. You're, oh, you're very welcome, Amanda. <coughs> D-Roar writes in. Amanda? D-Roar writes in. Short version. I hate I hate Apple Face ID. Don't rush to upgrade your iPhone. So many situations that fingerprint is preferred and Face ID won't work. My iPhone XS is the first iPhone upgrade I regret doing, and I had them all. So he's, he's got it, and he's just saying that it's, it's easier sometimes to just leave it on the counter and put your finger on it, which I agree. I otherwise, that, you have to, otherwise, you have to pick it up and look at it. I know first world problems and all, but I don't know. Well, thank you, D-Roar. Uh, yeah, I, I want one, uh, so just going to go with that. All right. <laughs> Jason's not fond of listening to anyone, in case you hadn't noticed on the show. I like to make my own mistakes, thank you very much. <laughs> and make them you do. Yes, in spades. Tree writes in, or try, not sure which way, not affiliated with anything related to Worm. If you're interested in a great sci-fi book, and this might be your style, it's from the perspective of a true AI, and it's Crystal Society by Max Harms. There's no way that that's the author's real name. No. That's a great, great name, though. It is a great name. And yeah. we'll link in the show notes. It's a completely free book that you can read online. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any ebook download version of it, so I'm not going to be sitting on my browser and reading. Yeah, yeah, you should have something out there. But, uh, Morgan yeah, writes in, at least. Yeah, seriously, just give us a PDF. Morgan writes in, hello, Grumps. First off, I want to thank you for introducing me to Opera and Privacy.com. I've been using Safari and Chrome my whole life and had never experienced the wonders of an ad blocker. My life has been changed. I forgot to use the GOG promo code when signing up for Privacy.com. So sorry. Well, you missed out Thanks. on five bucks. Thanks a lot, Morgan. God, the only thing that keeps us going. <laughs> he said, well, talking to a network admin about the wonders of Opera that I recently discovered, he told me about another web browser called Brave. I was wondering if you guys had ever heard of it and if you knew if it's any better than Opera. I'm still migrating from Safari, so I'd rather not migrate again just to see if it has better benefits. Thanks, you, thanks you guys for the great show and the help. P.S. It has better benefits. Thanks, you, thanks you guys for the great show and the help. Thanks, you guys, for the great show and the help. P.S. Uh, we have tried Brave. We talked about it on the show a while back. It's almost there. Not quite, but not quite. almost. Yeah. It doesn't do a lot of audio stuff, but... Uh, oh, by, the way, uh, by the way, Morgan, you can actually test out a browser without having to migrate all the way. That's what we did with Firefox recently. We just loaded up and see how it ran some of our favorite sites. We didn't move everything over. Yeah, I just imported the bookmarks because my, all my passwords are in one password, so that just migrated over. Um, uh, spoiler alert, Firefox ain't there yet no. either. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, these things are coming along. I get Brave maybe another year, and it'll be, I think it'll be up to snuff. All right. Eric, the accountant writes us, hey, Grumps and Co., I just wanted to send a thank you. I'm reactivating an old domain and wanted to snatch up the .org and .net equivalent. So I gave Hover a try. The pricing is great, the UI is great, and the free privacy options will save me countless calls and junk mail solicitations over the next few weeks. I'll be moving my ordered domains over to Hover over the next couple months. I hope you use our promo code. Yes, thank you, Eric. <laughs> Andrew writes Andrew writes in. Andrew writes in. My little home. Andrew writes Andrew. Thank you, Eric, the accountant. <laughs> thank you, Eric, the accountant. <laughs> Andrew writes in. My little. Well, homie immediately reminded me there's some brilliant stuff on YouTube combining My Little Pony cartoons and Wu-Tang songs. My Little Wu-Tang and Shame on the N-Word has to be the best stuff you might enjoy. Yeah, so you get that one to read to see what yeah. you're going to do. <laughs> I, I thought I had a time, so you were going to get it, but no. Nope. Yeah, uh, you killed one of the stories. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> my fault. Harold Kumar writes in, writes in, hey, Grumpies, what do you think about this news? And this is a link to the Economic Times, or in the India Times, government notices an issue in TikTok share chat notices. It's from my home country, India, whose techies Jason does not like a bit, but that might be because of his implicit bias from some of his interactions with the work he's seen from developers here. That's exactly uh, so it. They made shit code and ruined my life. Developers here. That's exactly it. They made shit code and ruined my life. From developers here. That's exactly it. <laughs> developers here. That's exactly it. They <laughs> made shit code and ruined my life. So, yes. It's interesting to see that all these media companies claim they're just a platform and so does TikTok. Yeah, well, why wouldn't they? As long as they can get away with just being a platform, that's what they're going to do. So, this shouldn't be too surprising, sadly. Uh, he also says that he's, uh, he should go for an iPhone XR. He came from the Android world and he was a huge Samsung Note fan. But after all the fire issues and new Note being so expensive, I switched to Apple XR. There's a long battery life, same as the Note tablet, which has a much bigger battery. It feels sturdy with all aluminum body as any premium phone should. I don't use face IDs. I travel in China. I don't want anyone to just unlock my phone by just putting it against my face. But I tried it and it works well with and without beard. Nothing you need to worry about there, Jason. No, it's even no, a no, deal no. if you buy it in Asia, so you get a dual SIM phone, so you can just have one phone for work and personal SIM cards. There you go. Yes. Yeah, if I don't shave for three months, I just look like an old Italian woman. <laughs> don't have to worry about a beard. Anyway, it's interesting because the government
Yeah, so be closing shout outs. I totally forgot. Don't need Dave's track at all. Let's get on that. Yeah. I've got a little bit of a plug. A little plug for uh, my shout out this week. It's called The Club. My plug is for The Club. And it's a little podcaster hangout that I made using Mighty Networks. And it's just like a little cool group hangout for people who are into podcasting and want to learn or want to teach. And you can come and just hang out with your podcast. It's a pretty blank slate right now as we're ramping yes. up. I'm just turning it on tonight. I'm, I'm so. looking and I'm seeing why should you join me? And it says coming soon. So oh, I have well, I haven't, to join it. No, I haven't, I haven't published <laughs> the landing page yet. So <laughs> it's, that's, that's why it's not up yet. I still have to finish publishing the landing page. But we've got a couple people in there already. We're trying to seed it with some things and topic starters and all that stuff. But if you're a podcaster, it's free, absolutely free. No tracking, no ads. I pay for it out of my own pocket because it comes from podcast school's budget. And that's just I want a place where we can all hang out that's not behind somebody's paywall that is trying to sell you some steak oil. So it's just come on by. Have some fun with us. And they're, they're they're and the Clan. We still have that. And the clan name is GOG.show. And if you ask me that on Twitter after hearing this, I will, <laughs> I, I, will I will just have an aneurysm. I won't do anything bad. I will just have an aneurysm. It's mainly the reason I brought it up again. I can't wait for all the tweets. <laughs> yes, Clash Royale. Clan is GOG.show. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Jason Philippo. And I'm Ryan Jill Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. To support the show and keep us on the air, go to patreon.com slash GOG. Toss us a few bucks and we'll love you forever. If you don't like Patreon but still want to support the show, you can give a one-time or recurring donation by just going to GOG.show and click that PayPal button. Recommended donation is $8 a month. Yes, that's a good, that's a good amount. It's PayPal button. Recommended donation is $8 a month. Yes, that's a good, that's a good amount. It's, it seems right to me. Your support really keeps us going and we really appreciate it. Show notes for this episode are GOG.show slash 374. And there you can find links to old episodes, leave feedback, ask questions, and get things to stuff we like. Stay grumpy. Now, slap in the outro. And we're almost home. Oops. Stuff we like. Stay grumpy. Always a little too loud, so make this one, knock it down, fade it in, knock it down, negative seven, and can't wait for all the tweets. Yes, Clash Royale. Clan is GOG.show. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Jason Filippo. And I'm Brian Schillmeister. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. To support the show and keep us on the air, go to patreon.com slash GOG. Plus, if you love some, we'll love you forever. If you don't like Patreon, but still feedback, ask questions, and get things to stuff we like. Stay grumpy. Okay, so while I was doing this one, I heard some stuff that I didn't like too much. So what we're going to do here, we're going to tack on some voice denoise. Uh, just use the adaptive mode, set it for gentle, and Bob's your uncle. And I'm going to do that on both tracks because I could hear it on mine too. We had fans running today. And sometimes they just get picked up. Especially you can't hear it when it's uh, quiet. But because we have the gates on, when we start talking, then you can kind of hear a really faint hiss. So that's that. Now, trick is save it. And then we bounce it. And once that's done, there we go. Save the bouncers. La -de -da -de -da -de -da -de -da. I'm going to pause this here and we'll pick it up on the next round. All righty, home stretch here. So I bounced it out. Logic gives us a nice little wave with stereo tracks. I always kill a track. Save that puppy. And take that and bring it into Ophonic. Oh, I was already doing another show, so open it back up. I just use negative 16 luffs, which is the good standard, and an adaptive leveler, and boom. What this is going to do, this is going to basically quote-unquote master it. It just brings all the levels up. The adaptive leveler in Ophonic is just a godsend, worth every penny. I recommend the desktop apps because you can batch process and test and do things without having to upload massive files. This is a 295 meg file. So anytime I wanted to tweak it, I'd have to re-upload and it's a pain in the butt. So I'm hopefully hoping that they're going to update these things soon because there are more features on the website, but here's the deal. This gets the job done. All done. So quit out of that. Kill the old one. We got the new one. Open this puppy back up. See how pretty that is. Is hopefully his entire year by gifting him your in Game of Thrones a two hour wrap that people sounds luscious. So now we're gonna add in some ID tags. We're gonna come back over here. Episode is three seventy four. 
And of course, got a lovely text expander snippets because why type if you don't have to? And we got three seventy four. And while you were gone, Brian got me the show art and the write up. So let me just add this in. And we're good there. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and I'm going to save it out. Or first we're going to save it. And then we're going to save it as an MP3. Kill that because non standard and save it as an mp3 64 kilobit mono that's what we're shooting for so we're going to save this and while that's going we can pop over here to libsyn create a new episode so we take our title slap our details in here's our quick write-up slap it in the subtitle the subtitle is going to get truncated at some point here and 374. Make this a link. Because sometimes uh, the players will treat that as a link. Sometimes you want it to actually be HTML. So we're going to take this. We're going to come down to the Apple section. We're going to go Gone Fishing. So season 1, 374. And fill this in. Boom. And we're going to take this whole block. And this is going to be our entire summary because Apple will change that into a link. We put all of the show notes at the website because there are things that we want people to do at the website. So if we put everything inside of these note tags, then people don't go to the website, which doesn't help anybody. I have a long spiel about show notes and the proper way to do it. We have tested this, so we kind of know what we're talking about because we've saw the, uh, the engagement on our website go up massively when we started doing this. So now we're going to set a new release here. It's going to come out tomorrow. It's going to come out at 3 a.m. Pacific, which is midnight here on the West Coast. So we've got all this stuff. Now, real quick, we're going to save it as a draft. Our MP3 is done. Go back to the editor because, like I said, this truncates. So always like to take a look. Oh, got lucky today, right where it needs to be. We go to add media file. And here it's in our bounces. There's our MP3. This is going to take a minute to upload. Let's go and can close this out. We're done with that for now. And while you are gone, I added in the show art and our description. So all we need now is this little URL. And that is going to come once this uploads and processes. But during that time, you can take a quick peek, make sure you got everything that you need to have. And there's our pretty artwork. And our schedule is for tomorrow at 3 a.m. And then we're gonna come back here. I don't need gone fishing anymore because we gone. So that's done. And to do, to do, to do. once it's done processing, boom, Bob's your uncle, publish it. And take this link, put this link into edit post. We're going to preview it one last time. Make sure everything's where it needs to be. Yep, privacy, gone fishing. Everything else is where it needs to be. And with that, schedule the post. Once this comes back, schedule. And that's it. That is how an episode of Grumpy Old Geeks is made. Hope you enjoyed it.